You may not have heard about the endangerment finding, but it's one of the biggest regulatory power grabs in recent American history. And whether you know about it or not, you're no doubt feeling its effects. The endangerment finding was a December 2009 finding by the Environmental Protection Agency in the first year of the Obama administration that claimed that human emissions of greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, etc., endangered human health and welfare. And it was in response to a 2007 Supreme Court decision, Massachusetts v. EPA, in which the court held that if the agency found that greenhouse gases endangered human health and welfare, then it could regulate it under the Clean Air Act amendments of 1990. Uh, that was a very, very odd decision because the Clean Air Act amendments of 1990 really had very little mention of carbon dioxide at all and mainly pertained to emissions coming from cars. But nonetheless, the EPA generalized this basically to cover the entire economy. What does that mean for you? The Obama administration used a court case and decades-old law to bypass Congress and regulate a vast portion of the U.S. economy by claiming that carbon dioxide and other gases endangered human health and welfare. It was the kind of power grab that goes unnoticed by much of the public, but not unfelt. The endangerment finding imposes higher costs on the energy we consume, essential industries we rely on, like agriculture, construction, and shipping, and even affects the design and safety of the cars we drive. The fuel economy standards that were promulgated by the Obama administration, uh, they can't be met, so far as we know, with anything that looks like a conventional fleet of automobiles. There has to be a very large number of electric cars. They're expensive. Uh, nobody knows how durable the batteries are going to be. But yeah, that's major lifestyle change that's mandated by the endangerment finding. So what does the future look like with the endangerment finding still in place? Fortunately, President Obama's move to bypass Congress means the endangerment finding can be reconsidered by the Environmental Protection Agency. Since the endangerment finding was made in 2009, it turns out that the computer models upon which it is based are making global errors in the tropics uh, from 20 north to 20 degrees south, predicting far too much warming to occur at altitude than is being observed. So, if we were going to update the endangerment finding with the science that was you know, applicable uh, uh, in the last few years, you probably don't have the science to support it anymore. Instruments tell us what is happening with the climate, but we have policies that rely on failed academic models that are immune to correction unless we reconsider the endangerment finding. If you don't have a model that works, you don't have the science to justify intrusive regulation. While excessive greenhouse gases in our atmosphere do contribute to warming, the observed changes in temperature do not pose an immediate threat, let alone a crisis. We shouldn't rely on outdated and inaccurate predictive models to justify sweeping and costly regulations that bypass Congress. When regulations are necessary, they should benefit the American people, not burden them with higher energy prices and cars they don't want. We are long overdue to vacate the endangerment finding.